Hey guys, and welcome back to another video here on the Geek Zone. I recently unboxed my iPad 2020 Pro, and I said that I would start to do a series on some of the apps on the iPad and what I use it for, and what makes it worthwhile as a device. If you simply get the tablet out of the box, really it's the apps that make the platform of the iPad. And I'm gonna be comparing today in this video the three titans of note taking. Now, there is a few videos floating around about notability versus good notes, and I wanna to add to that and throw in a kind of spanner in the works with OneNote, because OneNote does have some real benefits and also some drawbacks, so you have to decide for yourself if you think that that is gonna be a better platform for you. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. I should also give a shout out to uh, Samuel Suresh, uh, I watched his YouTube video on Notability versus Good Notes and how he uses an iPad Pro for note taking at university. Uh, he does really professional videos and he had a really good take on note taking for a university student. And my uh, outlook on it is a little bit different because I'm not a university student, but I do do, do use it for work and I use it for basically a bunch of home projects, side projects, uh, business projects that I'm working on. And so I've had a lot of in-depth usage with all three apps and I wanna kind of compare the pros and the cons, um, the pricing, the features that are missing, all of that stuff kind of, and then you know let you make a decision and I'll tell you at the end, which is the one that I preference on my iPad, even though I own all three. So let's jump straight into the iPad and let's start with the three um, apps that I have. So I've got a note taking folder here, I've got Notability, GoodNotes and OneNote. So straight off the bat, uh, Notability and GoodNotes are very similar price, they're around about $15 each on the App Store. I believe Notability is actually slightly more expensive, although right now it's uh, I think 20% off or something on the App Store, but I'm not sure how much longer that's gonna last. OneNote, on the other hand, is actually free, and that's all you need is a Microsoft account, which is pretty easy to sign up for, and again, also free, um, and that allows you to sync the OneNote application across uh, multiple platforms. I think you might be able to use OneNote without the Microsoft account, but if you want the syncing capability, and the backup to the cloud, like GoodNotes and Notability does through iCloud, then you definitely want that Microsoft account, and it's no trouble to set up. So, let's start with OneNote. It's the one I've been using the longest, and there's a few interesting things that make it stand out from the other two. First of all, being the compatibility across all platforms. I mean, it works on Mac, it works on Windows, it works on iOS, it works on Android, Hell, it even works on Linux if you have a web browser. Um, so, you know, it works everywhere and that's a huge plus because GoodNotes and Notability are stuck purely within the Apple ecosystem. Yes, they both sync to uh, a Mac as well. Uh, they have Mac apps and GoodNotes actually allows you to get the Mac app for free if you've paid for it on iOS and vice versa. Whereas Notability makes you buy it on both platforms. So just something to be aware of there is that the cost on Notability, you're gonna to have to be up for a double purchase. So now that we've got cost out of the way, let's talk about our next point. So let me just first define these note-taking apps. I feel like one of them is slightly more of a, more than just a note-taking app than the other two. And I'll explain. So, Firstly, both. let's start with, with Notability. So Notability is very simplistic in its layout. You have note categories down the left-hand side, and you have a list of notes on the right-hand side. Uh, you know, tap, creating a note is as simple as tapping on and, and just writing away. It's as simple as that. You know, you can do voice notes, and you, they have a big push towards voice notes, as you can tell by the icon, which is a pencil with a microphone on the other end and you, are, you can input uh, written text, type text, you can highlight stuff, array stuff, cut stuff, uh, move things around, so on and so forth. 
there's presentation mode, you can import photos, you can annotate PDFs. At the end of the day, it really is just a simple note system. Same can be said for OneNote. OneNote is also a very simple note-taking system. You have a list of notebooks down the left-hand side and notes in another column and the actual note on the right. So it kind of like does a bit more of a tiering system. You can color code those with tabs, just the same as you can with Notability. And creating a new note is as simple as hitting plus on the page. And again, just taking out the pencil and drawing away. It's very, very simple. I really love the added functionality of with some of these pens that have like, for instance, galaxy mode, which is really cool. So you can actually draw in like a galaxy pen. Uh, I'll go a bit thicker so you can actually see what it's doing. But yeah, you can like kind of color that in and create a bit of a galaxy. Notability is very simple in that you only get solid colors. And mind you, you can create your own palette. So you can, you know, go pastels or neons or whatever, but you really only have the option of a solid color. Uh, that's a small thing, but you know, it can be used to really jazz up a notebook, if you will. GoodNotes is very similar to Notability in the sense that it is only really solid colors. You don't have these galaxy or rainbow colors or whatever, but you do have a little bit more control um, in comparison to the options of pens and thicknesses. And now I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, I also don't wanna get off, off topic. Uh, I want to go back to what I mean by one of them is more than just a note taking app, but I'll quickly go through the pens and then I'll go back to that. So let's have a look. In Notability, we have the option for a solid thickness line pen, so we'll call a ballpoint pen, and probably like a brush pen or a fountain pen. You've got two types of pens. Then you have 16 different thicknesses and a color palette of, what's that, another 16, sorry, you have 12 thicknesses and 16 color palettes. So you, you have some choice, but it's not limitless or fully granular. The difference with GoodNotes is that GoodNotes allows you to have, let's create a new note here really quick. And we'll just say with the current template. So I have three colors to pick from at the top so I can get to those very fast. Uh, I would like to see more if it was an option. And while you do have three pick thicknesses to pick from, you can actually set very granularly down to 0 0.05 a millimeter, the thickness for that pen, and it will stay at that thickness. So if you set it at one mil, it's, that pen's gonna be one mil. Again, I have another one mil pen here, and I like, I like 0 0.75, one mil, and uh, two mil kind of give me the best options and then the colors again you can you can change them and you do have you can even set a hex code for the color option so you have a lot of granularity there but not to the level of one note in my opinion again tapping on a pen here we have fountain pen ball pen and brush pen so there's an extra pen there and the one thing that really sets good notes apart from the other two is the fact that you can set the angle of which you normally draw on your tablet so that it has enhanced palm rejection detection. And I think that is a really great feature. You also have sensitivity levels and you have, like you can select the stylus you're using. I like also that under the eraser tool, you can you know set some options like erase highlighter only or erase entire, entire stroke, auto deselect, these sorts of things. Um, but one of the things that kind of wigs me out with good notes, and I'll show you what I mean, is if I, if I write something and I go to erase it, you can actually see it, it erases in chunks. Notability and OneNote actually erase by pixel. So it feels like just what you're erasing is just what's being removed. And you know that's really handy if you've just put a little bit extra of a tail on a, on a letter or something and you just wanna squeeze it out. But with GoodNote, sometimes you can go a little bit too far and I don't, I don't quite like that. But, the difference with GoodNotes that sets it apart, in my opinion, from the other two is the fact that it more feels like a document management library. And what I mean by that is that if we go right back to the root here, you actually have folders. And now I've categorized my folders into a personal folder, a DIY folder, I've got one for my YouTube channel, The Geek Zone, I have a church folder here, and work notes. So 
what I have done is created folders for the very uh, topics that kind of like important in my life and in under those things I might have a notebook I could have PDFs for instance under my personal one I have my house plans so I have a PDF here which I can annotate uh, I have uh, different um, notebooks and I can have collections of notes I can have pictures all sorts of files uh, audio files and I love the fact that it's like a document library and I would say if I had to categorize it as anything I wouldn't just call it a note-taking app I'd actually call it a an idea collection app where all of my ideas all of my thoughts and processes and everything can kind of like be dumped in together now mind you in order to use an app like this that has a folder system and allows you to create all sorts of content within those folders you really need to be an organized person to begin with if you are a person that kind of saves everything on the desktop of your computer you're probably not going to do well with an app like this because you're going to create documents in the root of the app and it's just going to be strewn everywhere and you're going to really not be able to find what you need when you need it Organization is the key here, but that's what makes it more powerful than the other two apps for the type of use that I do. But really, ultimately, at the end of the day, we're going to be taking notes and I take notes for many different reasons. I take notes for you know lectures, for uh, meetings, for learning uh, on my computer, for creating uh, video plans, business plans, all sorts of stuff that I have going on in my life. and. When I write those notes out, I really want the experience to feel good. I want to feel like the pen is, I'm writing it on paper as much as possible and I have as much control as possible. Now, I'm going to say this, notability does something to my writing that I can't explain. It's almost like the pen is overly sensitive and it adds extra little bits to the notes that I'm writing. On the day-to-day -day experience, I just feel like the writing seems a little bit nicer for me in good notes. Now, I will say this. I don't think it's worth probably owning more than one note keeping system. There's not enough that one does over the other that makes it worthwhile paying double the price essentially for a second note keeping app. Me personally, I use good notes and I don't really use Notability or OneNote as much. Actually, OneNote was my exclusive app and that's because I came from a Surface Pro. Since switching to the iPad, the experience in GoodNotes has exceeded what I was used to with OneNote and therefore I have made the transition now. I still go back to OneNote from time to time to reference my old notes, but I'm slowly but surely migrating those notes and creating new notes in place in GoodNotes. So I think Ultimately, that's the one that I would promote. If someone asked me which note keeping app should I would I should get, I'm going to tell you good notes. Now, unfortunately, like I said, OneNote is more powerful in terms of its cross-platform functionality, and I am a Windows PC user, as you know. So that is a bit of a drawback for me. But most of the time I have my iPhone on me or I have my iPad with me, so I can access my notes if need be. But just being able to have it on a computer would be super handy. Now I do have a Mac, but I don't really use it as much as my Windows PC. So that's just a small thing. If GoodNotes ever released a, the Windows app and they made me pay for it, I would in a heartbeat because of the fact that it would be so handy to have it. Um, obviously with a price cap, of course, <laughs> disclaimer. If I could say one negative thing about GoodNotes and really I'm picking at straws here because it is a fantastic app. With the ability to create notebooks, you have pages behind those notebooks and sometimes I would have say one notebook for a specific say project if you will and under that project I might have subtasks or, or um, stages or different subject matter and some of those subjects would actually span over maybe two or three pages and when I look at the notebook and I look at all the pages there's no way to group those subset of pages into a specific topic. Uh, it would be really, really handy if I had the ability to say that pages, you know, two, three to six were two, two through to six, sorry, were like one subject and then seven through to 10 were another. And I could see that clearly as being, that's what the topic is. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world. What I can do is I can create a notebook under a subfolder 
and have the notebook for each chapter or section if I wanted to. It just gets a little bit more administrative. And the only other thing that I think that Good Notes falls behind on Notability and OneNote is both Notability and OneNote have infinite scrolling. Good Notes allows you to do both horizontal and vertical scrolling on your notes, but the problem is that each page is physically separated by a barrier. And sometimes I feel like my notes need to continue in one fluid kind of flow from top to bottom without having a break because it almost ruins the flow of my thoughts. And I wish there was a way that GoodNotes could actually have, even if the pages were numbered, but they still just continued as one long, super long page for a, you know, a note that maybe I'm taking that's six or seven pages long. And really that's the only two drawbacks on GoodNotes for me. I really feel otherwise it is worth the money. Um, and you know, if you already have Notability, don't feel bad. It is a fantastic app and it's not worth going out and purchasing GoodNotes unless you really want the folder functionality and the file management system. But if you haven't bought any of them yet and you're wondering which note system to get, definitely my opinion would be to promote GoodNotes. So without any further delay, I'm going to wrap this video up because I've already been waffling for so, so long. But I just wanted to make this video quickly to kind of share with you guys my thoughts and my feelings on which of the best uh, note apps are out there on the App Store. So guys, if you found this helpful, please give my video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and consider, cons and consider subscribing if you're just a visitor of the channel. Uh, I'd really love to have you around as a regular member here on the Geek Zone and look forward to chatting with you in the comments. And as always guys, that's it from me, so peace.